The Tacoma Narrows Bridge has harbored safe passage for Washingtonians for over 80 years. Galloping Gertie, the first design of the bridge, was constructed in 1938. It got its nickname from its galloping-like oscillation in the wind. These waves were so intense that a driver wouldn't be able to see the car in front of them on the bridge. At the time, it was the third longest suspension bridge in the world and the pride of the city of Tacoma. However, in 1940, a severe windstorm shook Gertie to collapse. Now, the remains of Gertie lie on the bottom of the Tacoma Narrows. But this story isn't about the bridge. These ruins are rumored to be home to a gigantic sea monster, the Tacoma Narrows Kraken, better known as King Octopus. Tacoma, Washington, aka the City of Destiny, or more recently, Grit City. The city's obsession with octopus can be seen everywhere. On every corner. King Octopus is deeply rooted in Tacoma culture. The tale of King Octopus has a history unknown. Some say they've seen 15-foot tentacles rise out of the water near Titlow Beach. Divers reminisce about a 600-pound kraken that lives underneath the Narrows Bridge. Others grew up with the fear that a giant octopus would snatch them off the bridge. But where did this tale come from? How much truth is there to this story? And why a giant octopus? Dakota Har, a local artist most famously known for her depiction of King Octopus, tells her version of the story. The story goes that there was somebody, there were multiple stories of people saying they saw a huge tentacle come out of the water under the bridge. And that's how the story got started. So whether or not, you know, my theory is probably that someone did see a pretty big octopus, obviously not 600 pounds, unfortunately, but they probably saw it and it just kind of escalated off that. And now we have this master, <laughs> master octopus that lives under the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. So I started looking into that and I was just like, this is so, and I love like octopus, octopuses are just like one of the coolest animals ever. I was so excited that I was like, could there be a 600 pound one? That would be amazing. So I looked into it and um, I think what I found, which was so cool was um, all the truth behind the story, which is just that it is a huge hotspot for giant Pacific octopuses. And they are particularly large in that area. And that's just from, the bridge collapsing, Galloping Dirty, um, I can't remember, it's like the 1900s sometime, and um, they have all these ruins down there. So it's not only like an amazing like little scuba diving park, it's a really great place to see Pacific octopuses all over the place. It's amazing. It's a great habitat for them. They're trying to conserve them there. And I noticed that like this is a huge myth in Tacoma and it kind of seemed to be like their, you know, their little like, what is it, <laughs> mascot. <laughs> the tale of the Kraken has been around for centuries. It derives from Scandinavian folklore and Norse mythology. The Kraken has been depicted in a variety of ways, but most refer to it as a gigantic octopus-like sea monster that terrorizes sailors. The first reference to modern representations of the Kraken was the half gufa, mentioned in the 13th century Icelandic saga Orvar Adra. In the late 19th century, Norwegian and Swedish immigrants flocked to the Tacoma and Gig Harbor area. They were drawn to the Puget Sound because it reminded them most of home. Like the tale of the Kraken and Half Gufa, 
Oral traditions are passed down from generation to generation. Mike Allen, historian and professor emeritus at the University of Washington, Tacoma, tells more on these traditions. Anytime you have men and animals and contests, then that fits into a pattern that folklorists recognize. And many stories are attached to that pattern. They can bleed over into commercial, you know, technically folklore, oral tradition has no invention. It, it just goes back in oral tradition, shows up somewhere. And when it becomes commercialized, then things change. Uh, they become more static. Uh, and so that was my interest as a folklorist. You know, folklorists have a motif index. Uh, they, and they identify what they call tail types. And incidentally, they don't call them myths. Be careful of that term myth, M-Y-T-H, because it, it's, uh, it refers to a huge story, a story that, you know, creates a, well, like a creation myth. And so myths, myths are huge. Man versus animal is a myth, because that's a huge category. And you're into what they call uh, tales or tail types or variants of tail types, uh, you know, that kind of go down uh, underneath the mess. So folklorists are like biologists. They, they dissect stories and they find tail types and motifs within the tail type, and then they find variants. And what I see here is a tail type, uh, first of all, uh, in the larger sense of man versus animal, which has got to do with civilization and, and men wanting to conquer the wild and conquer the wilderness and, and create um, you know, a modern technological civilization and having to overcome nature in order to do that. So that's the big story. But then you divide it down and you get into man versus specific animals, in this case, sea monsters. These man versus animal encounters took on an interesting form in Tacoma. During the late 1950s and early 1960s, Tacoma, Washington was the prime location for octopus wrestling. In 1963, ABC's Wide World of Sports televised the World Octopus Wrestling Championships hosted at Titlow Beach. Gary Keffler, co-founder of the event and his diving team, the Mud Sharks, won the championship title by wrestling an octopus to shore weighing 57 pounds. Yeah, it got on television. We uh, got on Wide World of Sports and we, we had, uh, what we did is uh, the local club sponsored it and all the clubs around sent people to compete and it was starts out when you get there you go out and you go out in two heats one heat is holding your breath so you have to go down and hold your breath and catch the octopus and your second heat was with the tank you could go down and catch him you got more points for the breath only because it was extremely harder locally here we get octopus in shallow water which is uh, bigger than any place else in the world Biggest one I ever caught. I was when I was doing uh, doing doubles for Sea Hunt. We caught one for Sea Hunt for my, uh, the Mike Nelson, and we caught one, and it was 21 foot across. And we used it for the for the pitchers, and we used it a couple three days, and then turned it loose afterwards. It's no mystery that the octopus has an impact on the Tacoma community and the Puget Sound marine ecosystem. These creatures are so unique. They look like they're from another planet. Perhaps there is a 600 pound kraken living under the bridge. The next time you visit Tacoma, be on the lookout. And who knows? You might be lucky enough to spot our king octopus.